Welcome to the Seal Toe University podcast. Today's episode, we are going to talk to Kat Thompson, and she is going to talk to us about her um, role in her business and how she has managed to um, run a business, run a family, and all of that kind of stuff. So if you are a man listening, I highly encourage you to listen to what Kat says, because if you have a female partner in your life, they may also be having some of the same feelings. And if, you're, if you do have a female partner in your life, I highly encourage you have her listen to Kat's story and what she has to say, because um, maybe she can help your partner in, in a multiple ways. And um, I'm sure she'll share some mistakes they've made along the way. So hopefully we can avoid some of the pitfalls along the way. So welcome, Kat. Thank you for joining me today. Um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your story and um, the business that you guys run and about your family and everything like that. Awesome. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. <laughs> um, so uh, we own a landscaping company in College Station, Texas. Um, my husband actually started the company three years ago and I joined in like at a later date. Um, so we met here in Bryan College Station. We actually both come from kind of like a rough um, past where we, we kind of delved into some things that we shouldn't have. We had some addiction issues before we met and we went through a rehab program separately and met on the other end of that. And um, he has two kids from a previous relationship and then I got pregnant with our daughter and um, we've just kind of been working through this crazy thing called life um together which is pretty awesome um so we've got three wonderful kids and um we were both working full-time jobs uh prior to owning the business and daniel just kind of wanted to do something on his own terms to where he could make money and keep and um not have to you know, work for somebody else so that he could make his own hours and his own money. And, um, at first I was super skeptical, right? Like we all are, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know about that. Cause we're so brought up to know that like that nine to five job or, you know, that eight hours you work is like, that's what you're supposed to do. You're just supposed to work for somebody else. You know, um, it really wasn't until I actually got involved in an MLM um, business that that entrepreneur spark came to me because I fully believed in those products and I still do. I still take those products, but, <laughs> um, I don't do that business anymore because that model of business didn't work for me after a while. Um, but it took that to get me more involved in our business. Um, and so it got to a point where Daniel was just not able to do all of the things he wasn't able to go out and do the quoting, the jobs, follow up with customers. Um, so I kind of jumped in and took that role and quit my full-time job and stayed home with our daughters. Cause it was like, I was paying for daycare. Like what was, what's the point, you know, um, our two older kids were in school at this point. So, um, but yeah, we, we just kind of both jumped in full force and figured out all these things along the way. Um, so I predominantly do all the office management. Um, I'm starting to get into doing more quoting uh, of like landscaping jobs and lawn care and all that good stuff. Um, Daniel's currently out in the field. <laughs> so we had a project manager and we were like, yeah, this is great. And then he quit. So now we're back. We're back to like me trying to pick up all the stuff in the office and Daniel's out in the field. Um, but we're making it work. That's what this partnership and relationship and business is all about is you go with the ebbs and flows and you just kind of figure it out along the way. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, I'd like to hear more about your transition from being a full-time employee to, um, being in the office? Was it a slow transition? Did you like do part-time office stuff before? Did you jump head, head, head in and just like, I quit this job and now I'm doing this or how did, what did that look like for you guys? So I actually quit my job for two reasons. So I was working in a restaurant. That's what I've done my entire life is working in restaurants. I actually went to culinary school. Um, and so it got to a point where like, I was literally going to be paying for daycare because Daniel pays all the other bills. And um, it was like, what's the point in paying for daycare if I can just stay home 
you know, and do this MLM business that I was involved in and help you with the business. So I quit that job so that I could help him and do my business at the same time and stay home with our daughter because I'd already missed out on so much of her life. Um, and so it, it was kind of a process because I was so used to going to work because that's just what I've done for, you know, the last 10 years of my life. And um, it definitely was it definitely was a process learning how to like stay home <laughs> and not like have to go to work. Um, and then we got our office, which I'm in right now, <laughs> but we got our office about a year ago, year and a half ago. Um, so that was definitely a transition as well, but one that was so needed because trying to work from home with kids on the weekends and, after school and stuff like that was just not working the best for us. <laughs> so we kind of had to separate home and business so that we could get more things done and not be aggravated with the kids if they were bothering us. Cause they're just kids, you know? Right. So, um, that was definitely a transition that we went to as well. And it was a, it was a slow process. Like we just kind of slowly started moving and slowly started getting me over here. Um, and we actually hired a friend of mine to be our, basically she's like a nanny for us. She, she cleans the house. She watches the kids. She picks them up, takes them wherever they need to go. Um, and that's been extremely helpful. Like I can't even tell you how helpful that's been. Um, so that's allowed me to be in the office full time now, which is great. Yeah. So what did that look like before nanny be in like how did oh, you manage you know like I mean a lot of times a spouse typically a female spouse in a relationship running a business with her husband has a really hard time like oh my gosh kids are screaming in the background the phone's ringing I have to make dinner this one needs homework help how did you manage that um before you had the help of the nanny um not well <laughs> So, um, it was rough. There was a lot of days that were really rough. Um, pre COVID, uh, it was, it was helpful to have the boys in school and only have Delilah at home. Um, because it was only one kid, right? One kid's pretty easy when you've got multiples. Um, so I think that did make it a little bit easier, but it was, it was pretty rough there for a little while. Uh, I definitely had quite a few phone conversations with clients where there were screaming kids in the background <laughs> and they're like, Oh, it's okay. We have kids or like we have grandkids. So we're, we're thankful that we've got like clients that are understandable, you know? Um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of rough sometimes. I know I've had a few meltdowns here and there trying to get work done and also spend time with the kids or, you know, make sure I had time to pick them up from school. I, I think there was probably one time where I might have like forgotten that I was supposed to pick the kids up and, <laughs> you know, I was just like got there super late, but I mean, it, I went through that when I was a kid too. My parents were entrepreneurs as well. And I remember one time they forgot to pick me up. I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm just carrying on the tradition. <laughs> the right <pass> so, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's stressful, you know, working at home with the kids, but, um, I really think just overcoming that and like just pushing forward instead of giving up has been our biggest success with the business. Um, cause there's been plenty of times where we're like, I don't think I can do this or, um, where I've had just days where I'm like, I literally cannot do this today. And I'll just step away from the business for those days, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we both have days like that. So that having a partner that's been understanding about stuff like that is, is extremely helpful. Um, and sometimes there's, there's days where it's like, no, you need to just get it together. And like, we need to do this job. It's like, yeah. all right. You know? <laughs> so it's, just, it's a, it's a give and take break. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so speaking of Daniel, um, how do you guys manage that relationship? So you have the kids and then you have the business and then you have the two of you, how do you manage like, okay, we're not going to talk about the kids all the time. We're not going to talk about the business all the time. How do you like, you know, be cat and Daniel still? 
So we try, we try to have date night at least twice a month. Right now it's been a little difficult. We were doing it like once a week. Um, but since we've been a little bit more busy and we lost our project manager, it's harder for us to do that. Um, but we do still make sure we take time, even if it's at nighttime to just put our phones up and just sit and talk to each other about like what's been going on personally and, um, trying to not, not talk about business, which is extremely hard because <laughs> our heads are just in the business all the time or not talk about what's going on with the kids, which is also really hard because that's your life. You know, um, when it, when COVID wasn't happening, I'm going to say that a lot because there's a lot of things we did before COVID. Um, we, we went on business trips that were like bizcations, you know? Um, so those were really helpful where we'd just go out of town for like three or four days and go explore and just have an adventure because that's something we both really enjoy. Um, we also, we also try to spend time like uh, working out together, which has been really helpful too. We've kind of slacked off on that a lot lately, but, um, that's, that's something we do as well to kind of like get out of the business and out of the kids. And, um, yeah, so it's really like travel is a big one and, you know, just doing something that has nothing to do with those other two things has been really helpful for us. Yeah, I think that a, a lot of business owners, like you almost have to like physically remove yourself. Yeah. From, not that even when you go on a vacation or a business trip, you know, you're still doing, you're still wearing the business owner hat, but just even removing yourself from the physical like office, even house, like then it helps a lot. Like, okay, like we are two humans who have interests outside of these other two things who are connected. So I, yeah. I definitely see that a lot with people. Yeah, and we do that with our with our crew as well. Like once a month, we'll go and do um, what do we call it? Where we take we just take them out for a fun day. Like we'll do a training at the shop, and then we like physically remove everybody from the business, and we go do something really fun. Um, last month, they went and played paintball. I did not play, <laughs> but they had a, a lot of fun doing that. And we've taken them to like escape rooms, and um, we've done like landscaping olympics here between our landscaping crew and our lawn crew which was really fun um and i think we're gonna go ride go-karts this month so we, we try to do that with them as well so yeah that's you know that's that's a whole nother podcast we should record is just you yeah. know <laughs> keeping a crew like together um so i would also like to ask how do you remain you how do you take yourself out of wife mom and business owner like how do you be cat like how do you not get sucked into all of these other things you have to do and just also pursue things that you're interested in that is like the hardest thing ever you know like as as a wife a mom and a business owner it's like it's so hard to do that but um i have a really great group of like friends that make sure that i do that and my husband also makes sure that i take time for myself um i i go to dance classes because that's what i grew up doing and it's just so fun that's my number one escape is to go to dance class um because it's, it's just me with the other people in the dance class. I don't have to think about business. I don't have to think about kids. Like, it's just dance, you know? All I have to think about is moving my body. <laughs> um, so that's one way I do that. And then um, I also really like all the things that go along with, like, spa-type things, like massages and baths and stuff like that. So that's another way that I do that as well. And then... Um, I really enjoy music and movies and stuff like that. So, um, like we've gone to concerts and stuff like that to just kind of get away. And that's an escape for me too. Um, and then I like to read as well. So those are all things that, that I try to do for myself. Um, I go to dance classes twice a week and then, um, I do like my baths and stuff quite often as well. <laughs> So, so classes you do, are they kind of like, 
I mean, outside of, you know, extreme situations, are those like a non-negotiable? Like I am going to this class and I don't care. Like the, if, if the house is burning down, I'll stay home. But outside of that, I will be at that class. And I don't, I don't care what you're doing, Daniel. You're going to be here with the kids because this, I need to go out. Do you kind of like have boundaries like that? Yeah. So, um, Tuesdays are like my non-negotiable dance days. Um, and then Fridays, every other Friday is pretty non-negotiable as well. Um, and I try to do the same for Daniel too, so he can go to the gym. And this is kind of where like the nanny comes into play too, because she'll take the kids to their dance classes and then someone else will pick them up from the dance class. So sometimes it's Daniel and sometimes it's me. Um, and then if, for some reason, like they don't make it to dance class or whatever. Cause we go to dance class on the same days. I made that work out, <laughs> but, um, Daniel will be home to be with the kids. And I mean, there's, there's been like maybe once where, or twice where he got stuck on a job site and wasn't going to get home till super late. And on those times I'm like, you know what, this is like, doesn't happen that often. So, but I do try to make that non-negotiable for myself because that is something that's very, very close to my heart. And I, I just love, I love dance classes. So, yeah. Okay. Do you have any, so this is, I, I kind of gave you a few of the questions I was going to ask you, but do you have any like passions that you feel like you've let go because, you know, of all of the busyness of running a business? Um, I feel like a lot of times when people work a nine to five job, they, they work and then they go home and they're not working anymore. And now I have from five to 10, 11 o'clock every night to do what I want to do. And I feel like a lot of business owners lose out on that, that evening time, the early morning time, the weekend time, because it's like, well, okay, I don't have anything to do right now. So I'm going to go get caught up in this area because there's always something over here that needs to be done. Do you feel like you've let any um, desires or passions go because of oh, yeah. your goal. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, I went to culinary school. And so that, like, cooking has always been, like, a big passion of mine, too. And I get to do it for my family now, which is great, you know. But I don't have the time to, like, actually bake or, like, make things like I, I would normally um, – and I kind of like let go of that career choice a long time ago, but, um, there's days where I'm like, man, I should just open a food truck, <laughs> you know, but then I'm like, well, I don't know if I'd be able to do that because I've got kids and we've got this other business. And, um, another like hobby of mine that I've kind of let go of is like sewing and being crafty. And cause I just, I don't, I don't have time for it per se, but like, I think the truth is that I just don't make time for it because I'm so tired by the time I get done at the end of the day that I'm just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Or like in the mornings, it's like my brain's already on business when I wake up. So it's just, um, a lot of it, I feel like I just don't make the time for it. And sometimes I will, but not as much as I used to. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> do you feel like resentment over it? Like ever? Like, I mean, so, so Daniel started the business. Do you ever feel like, oh my gosh, he, I mean, I know that he didn't force you to do anything, but like he got me into this mess and now I don't get to cook and now I don't get to do that. Do you feel resentment or are you pretty like at peace and okay with it? I think for a little while I, I did, um, not necessarily at him, just like kind of resentment towards myself for not like pursuing my dreams and passions when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've talked a lot about like incorporating my creativity in with the business in the future and doing some other really cool things that we would both really enjoy. And I think, um, I think that's kind of sparked my like passion for this business again, mm -hmm. because, you know, we've, we've gone through like periods of time where we're like, this sucks. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, let's just quit and do something else. But then it's like, okay, well, what do we really, really want to do? Like, where do we want to go from here? And, and we've kind of got this awesome idea in our heads. And now I'm like determined to make this happen. And so I'm like, all right, let's keep going, you know? 
So I think that has helped a lot too with that. And I've kind of become more at peace with like, okay, I'm not going to be like Gordon Ramsay, you know, uh, that's just not going to happen. But there's other ways that I can incorporate that into my life, which has been really helpful for me to realize over the last couple of years. Yeah. And that's the entrepreneur in you. Like, yeah, yeah it's not like how I saw it, but this is the way I can, you know, make it happen in a different way that also fulfills me. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's all the questions I had sent to you. Actually, it's extra questions. Do you have any like last minute wisdom that I haven't asked or we haven't touched on? Um, either in the role of being a mom business owner, a wife business owner, uh, quitting your job and jumping in kind of like, you know, you weren't a business owner and now you, now you are like running your business. Like what are, what would your like piece of wisdom be for everyone? So I think a big piece of wisdom is like to not be afraid of big changes because there's always something better on the other side. And if it doesn't work out, there's always another direction you can go, right? There's always like forks in the road. And, um, cause I, I got nervous at first when Daniel quit his job and did this full time. And I was like, Oh my God, it's never going to work. And then it's like, it works. And I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, um, I think keeping your, your brain in a positive manner is also very helpful um, we've been working on that a lot lately instead of like manifesting negative things. We've been like talking about things like they're already happening and, um, talking about it like, oh yeah, that's, it's going to go fast. Like, don't even worry about it, you know? And then it happens. So that's something that we've, we've really discovered has been helpful. And in like home life and being a mom and a parent, um, I think like, taking on the workload with your partner is such a big thing for both of you because like just because you're out working a 12-hour shift out in the field doesn't mean your partner's been having a great day at home with all the kids or working with clients because they can be a lot sometimes you know um so it's a different thing like physically and mentally, but it's both tiring, right? So if you come together at the end of the day and help each other out, it's it's going to help your relationship. It's going to help your home life. I mean, that's probably like the biggest piece of wisdom I can give. And taking the time to spend like 15 minutes with each kid individually has been really, really helpful for us as well and for them because they all feel like they're getting, you know, the perfect like parent time, you know? So those, those are just some like snippets of things that have really worked for us, um, lately. And yeah, I just, I hope everybody can take something from this and use it in their own life. Yeah. I have one more question now that you brought up the working in the field versus working at home. Did, so obviously when uh, somebody's like out working in the field and grinding and mowing lawns and cutting bushes and doing all that kind of stuff, like we know you're working, we can see it. Mm -hmm. did you guys, did you have a hard time with Daniel? Like, like your home, like feel like, well, you're not working as hard as me because you're not physically like exerting all this muscle and everything. Did you guys have, did, did you have a struggle with that? Like, yeah, I'm not, th I'm not out there, but I am answering calls and managing kids and making lunches and getting kids to school and picking kids up and doing all that. Like, how did, if, did you have an issue with that? And if you did, how did you guys overcome that, like, disconnect? Oh, yeah. I think everybody goes through that. Like, there was definitely a bunch of arguments, <laughs> right? Like, well, you're not doing anything. I'm like, but yes, I am. Like, you don't understand, you know? And it's, it goes both ways. Like, sometimes I don't understand, like, you do this every day. Like, it's the same thing. Like, I don't get why you can't come home and help, you know? Um, but I think at some point, like, we've kind of switched roles a little bit, too, where, like, when I still did have my, my full-time job um, and Daniel was working in the business full-time, he wasn't doing anything like physically sometimes because it was the very beginning of the business and it's slow and um so he was the one that was taking care of the house and picking up the kids and doing all those things you know um and so I think 
I think, you know, we've both realized like, I can't do your job the way that you would do your job, you know? So we understand now that like, I am much better at cooking and cleaning and making lunches and doing all those things and talking to clients. And you're better at doing all the physical things that I would not be able to do that for 12 hours. And I've gone and worked out in the field with him before too. And so um, we both have just kind of come to an understanding that, that we've, you know, we've kind of found our like niche in life. <laughs> and so, you know, we just kind of help each other along the way. Like if he needs help one day, I will get a babysitter and turn the phones off. Or now we have an office person as well. So she answers the phone, but I'll go out in the field with him. And if I need help at home, he helps me. So I think it's really like just been about communicating those needs over time and just kind of realizing ourselves that like, it, we all need help sometimes and that it's it's never like one-sided or you know you need to do this 100% and I need to do this 100% it's sometimes it's 70 70 30 and sometimes it's 80 20 and sometimes it's 50 50 so um I think it's just it's just taken a lot of time and conversation to get to that point okay Awesome. Well, thank you for um, talking to us today about your journey that you guys are on and have experienced. Um, if, um, if you liked what Kat said, I'm sure we will have her on again, especially for the um, crew bonding things that you guys do. That's yeah. awesome. So thanks for joining us today and um, we will see you next week.